Noble Gold CEO Colin Plume thinks quantitative tightening is setting up the stage for a gold rally. In his interview with the National Desk, Plume said that the tightening is pushing the dollar up. However, he predicts that by next year, the Fed will print money again to restart economic activities. If you're thinking of gold and silver right now, Noble Gold is giving a free gold American Eagle coin with every eligible IRA or 401k in September. You can't go wrong with Noble Gold. Call the team now at 877-646-5347 to find out more or Visit noblegoldinvestments.com. Hey, hey, Inspire Tribe, my fellow freedom lovers, it's John Nolan here. Thank you so much for joining us for another inspired conversation. Today, my soul brother, brother from another mother, CEO and chief storyteller of Food Forest Abundance, Jim Gale. Everyone, Jim, thanks so much for joining us again today. Oh. Gosh, thank you for being here. I'm just, I've got a perma grin on my face because <laughs> I just, I love you. It was just a great chat with you and your beautiful wife, Christine. And um, it's just been an amazing time. It's the most amazing time to be alive. Uh, you can just feel the energy rising as we step into the golden age. Oh yeah, absolutely. And and Jim, you you have been on this journey of awakening, but also taking action for the better part of 15 years. And I think so many of us, you included, me included, we thought 10 years ago, you know, we thought it's going to happen now. It's got to happen. The, the, you know, it's going to explode, if you will, in a good way. And, and it really, it was kind of like a dripping faucet, truth yeah. dripping and dripping and dripping. Now... It feels like someone's opened up the faucet completely. It's just, <laughs> and every day now is a revelation in a revelation in a revelation. It's tire. It's tiring. It is tiring. I know a lot of people are feeling it, energetically draining so much. But we always knew we were going to go through this time. How do you feel this? How do you perceive this? What's happening in your world? Well. That energetic shift and, you know, because what we're used to, what's normal is where people, they, it's a habit, right? What their particular frequency or vibration is, that becomes their habit. And when they go a little bit over that or a little bit under that, then they say, oh, what's wrong? And they come back to homeostasis. Sometimes if they get a little bit depressed, they'll go for a walk and they'll feel a little better. Sometimes if they get a little too excited, they'll go have a beer or go have some Doritos and they'll feel a little worse, but they feel normal. So to be aware of our habits, how do we habitually feel? feel and then to notice those times and one of the things in my life as a wrestler I did a lot of weight cutting and I did it to an extreme my junior year in high school and it I, I had some traumatic experiences around that I cut from 118 to 101 my junior year in high school oh, <laughs> as a wow. little tiny guy and then after that I I held off puberty I held off everything but the point is is I had an interesting relationship with food and so I became very aware of how I was energetically and then what I would reach for. And I would notice that when my energy would rise up, I would reach for something that brought my energy back down. But then I said, wait a minute, why do I want my energy? I desire, I enjoy my energy to be up. And so I started slowly taking those things out of my life and be with the new awareness, I was able to have a new choice. And the awareness was that's a lower energy frequency. I don't want to go there. And so that's kind of been my process to continuously be able to accept and enjoy more energy. Which is, um, especially in these times, such a beautiful thing. What you just spoke about reminds me a lot of what Dr. Joe Dispenza says. Yeah. And he's, for those who are not as familiar, he basically breaks down in a spiritual and scientific way, but he uses science language, which is often easier to understand for people, how we are driven by what we often think is intuition and real feelings when they're really just chemical signals from our body that are produced by our habits. In other words, your biochemistry is a direct reflection of the habits you fed it. And so it'll continue to give you those urges. So if you if you always eat a certain food at a certain time, every day you're going to crave it. That's your body giving you the signal. It isn't your intuition. It isn't higher guidance. It's just your habit. So what you're saying is when you step above and beyond those habits, 
you get in touch with a, a higher guidance and then you can actually actively choose rather than just react. Is that what you're saying? That's exactly what I'm experiencing. Yes. Which is such a beautiful thing. Um, and for those of you, I mean, Jim, Jim has been on our channel many times, but for those of you who don't know food is not just something that Jim has had a lot of personal experiences with. It is something he's now sharing with the world in the most profound yes. way possible. Uh, Jim, a quick recap of what it is that you do on a daily basis. Oh gosh. You know, it's funny. I just made the link as you were saying that between my trauma with food as a 17, 18 year old and my connection with food now that is just profound that I never really put those two together, but they're actually absolutely together. So what we do all over the world, food forest abundance, right? And we're all about creating a society of abundance. We're about designing food systems into the fabric of our society, into the landscape of our society. When we transform, we've got 44 or so million acres of lawn in the United States alone. When we expose the poisons and the poison producers and we supplant those with natural systems, source, God-given systems, when we grow food instead of half of our lawns, we will reverse cancer trends, heart disease trends. We will re reverse diabetes trends. We will reverse deforestation, which is leading to mass extinction. Deforestation along with the poisons is leading to mass extinction, which we are experiencing right now. Now, in the future, the future that is logical and beneficial in every way is we grow foods instead of ornamental plants. The farmland, we've all, most of us have flown over the heartland and pretty much everywhere. And you see chunks and chunks and chunks of the same color monocrop. This Farmer might have beans. This one might have corn. This one might have wheat. But you see one color for hundreds, if not thousands of acres. That's massively destructive and unnatural. Those farms in the relatively near future, within one and a half, maybe one generation, maybe a little bit longer, will be all forest again. It'll be paradise, paradise. with food everywhere. Absolute paradise. Now, Jim, what you're saying um, is not the Green New Deal. It's not the Great Reset talk. It's not the UN talk. It's not the climate change talk. We are not participating in these charades. What we're saying is we have God's sources, natural tools. And you're saying, listen, you've been duped into putting tons of poisons into your lawn and taking care of it and paying people to mow it every 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 week and and so much of that space is wasted while the shelves are getting emptier while the food supply chains are being brought down and you're saying we can reverse this but you're saying the the big trends might take a generation but the 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 smaller trends how to how to actually do local futures local local communities this can be changed within a matter of months months Boom. you can step outside your back door right now and you can plant a seed that's the most logical place to grow food is outside your back door and within the next 50 feet and 100 feet within 100 feet of your back door you can grow all of the food your family needs and here's the part that blows people's minds here's the part that i have conversations with people about every single day where they simply don't believe it they don't believe that it's easy to grow food. We have been systematically using very wicked PSYOP and NLP techniques. We have been conditioned and programmed to believe that growing food is hard. It's as easy to grow an apple tree, an orange tree, a banana tree, uh, an avocado, as it is to grow an oak tree or a willow tree, as long as it's in the right environment, as long as it's in the right zone. Right. So if you're in Minnesota, apples and pears and peaches and plums and mulberries and raspberries and blueberries and blackberries, they are as easy to grow as the current ornamental landscape that most people have. It's literally the same amount of energy in 
except for the energy out, which is the food production, is exponentially valuable. And what you're doing, what your company, which is really, when we say company, it doesn't really reflect it. It's it's a movement. It's a vision. It's much more than a company. But what you're doing is you're actually saying, listen, having gardens doesn't mean necessarily it's all chaotic and whatnot. We can create a beautiful landscaping design, just like you would with any other landscape design, but it's going to be edible. It's going to be perennial. It, it's going to be on the permaculture, uh, based on the permaculture principles, which means that these plants in, in guilds, as they're planted, will create symbiosis and will uh, nurture each other and will produce fruits year after year after year. And you, you're you saying, we're not just helping you design this. We're not just designing this for you. If you want to, we'll come and install it at your company, at your house, at your church, at your organization, right? That's what you're, it's a whole new concept. Yes, at your school. And really it's the most ancient concept that there is. It's the concept of using our resources, which is our energy, our hearts, our minds, and our properties, our land, where we live wisely. It's just, it's really the most embarrassingly simple. In fact, the quote that took me out of my cognitive dissonance and kind of a, a really slumpy time in life because I was, it was 2007 and I learned what was going on in the world. And I studied the problem 12 hours a day on average. Like I was just like, I couldn't believe it for the first little bit. And then I couldn't stop studying it because I had my first two daughters and I'm like, I, I have to figure out something. We have to change this because this trend will lead to the death of our ecosystem, a systemic collapse. So then when I read Bill Mollison's quote, though the problems of our world are increasingly complex, the solutions remain embarrassingly simple. And I started to ball. And from that day forward, I became at first obsessed, but obsession is a scarcity driven energy. So about two years ago, I went into faith and courage deeply and I became joyfully obsessed, right? So in other words, I'm having a blast. And with that kind of obsession, I started asking a million questions all day long. I was like, okay, if this fits here and this fits here and this fits here, then how do we inspire and empower this shift? And that's where we are now. And that's where it's scaling exponential. We are in the process, we being the whole permaculture movement of inspiring and empowering. And those words are often just used, but we're talking about really, truly inspiring and empowering this shift on a global scale. Which is happening uh, for you on a daily basis now. The, it refl you know, the, re the full reflection is God's Landing, which is the source, the source place for your movement or headquarters in, in company speak. Um, and you are now attracting really wealthy people who are saying, listen, I, 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 I see what's happening. I want to put my fiat in the ground and actually grow something of value. So you've been telling me for the past weeks, listen, I am getting more and more calls by really, really wealthy people who are saying, I'm in, we're in, we want to do this. And the truth is everywhere you go, we talk about this. It's not really a pitch. You tell the story as it is and people get it. They, they feel it. They taste it. They smell it. But recently, uh, you've come up with a few videos on your, uh, on your social media that are going beyond just pitching to fellow humans. <laughs> yeah. And this came from you explaining about who's currently in charge of the systems of the world. Do you want to dive a little bit into that and what your idea is? Yeah. And why not? It's fun. So I like having fun with this process. I look at this as this is my personal thing. Like anybody could take this or leave this. It's just my thing that brings it empowers me to first not fear death. I have no fear of death. There's no such thing from my particular belief system. There's no such thing as death. There's only the transition of energy, right? We are spirit in my belief system playing a divine game. And so if that is my belief, and it is, then the question is, what's the game? Where are the clues to the game? And I look at all the clues. I look at Napoleon Hill's statement, whatever the mind of man or woman can conceive and believe it can achieve. I threw in the or woman. I've got four daughters and I see a massive 
imbalance between masculine and feminine for a long, long time. So saying it again, whatever your mind, whatever my mind can conceive and believe it can achieve. Now, when you step back and you really meditate on the power of that, this wasn't just some random guy. This was the guy, Napoleon Hill, that studied the most successful manifestors, creators, producers, business people in history. And he deducted that God-like statement from his studies. The Bible says similar things. The Quran says similar things. The Bhagavad Gita says similar things. So who am I to argue with these amazing people? Instead, I'm going to say, oh, if that is true, then what's the next logical question I could ask? What can I conceive and believe? Right. Victor Hugo said there's one thing stronger than all of the armies of the world. And that is an idea whose time has come. Holy shit. What's the idea? Right. And then I'm like, OK, well, what's the ultimate ideal for humanity? It's enlightenment. Right. What's the highest state a human can reach? The state of enlightenment. Now, there are certain entities that try to say you cannot reach enlightenment. Well, that's a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> because enlightenment, from my perspective, isn't the ability to move shit with my mind, right? It's not breaking the laws of this construct, this laws of physics. It's simply saying, hmm, my mind is clear of the programs. That's to me, a light mind, a free mind, clear. of. Well, then where did the programs come from? Well, where do all programs come from? They come from, well, in a lot of cases, AI, Right. Some come from culture and different things. But where do they stem from? And so I'm playing a game here. I'm like, OK, we've got an entity called Black Rock, which happens to be the most powerful. Nah, let me change that word. Most forceful entity on this planet. They did twenty one trillion dollars last year. Microsoft and Apple and Amazon and J&J &J and Pfizer and you name it. That's where their money went. Centralized systems that they control, right? When the government, government, which means mind control, just what a coincidence that is. When the government put out $10 trillion in the last three years, where did that money go? Well, what? A, pen, a pittance went to the people and everybody was cheering. Look, I got 500 bucks, you know, in the, every month. Wait a minute. Where did most of that money go? Where did 90 plus percent of that money go? to the exact entities that I just named. So wait a minute. So the government takes this money, the money that BlackRock is a parasite. It's a sucker of energy. The money represents the productive value of humanity. And it's now being sucked out by a, a computer named Aladdin. Now, and this is all stuff you can look up. Look up BlackRock, 21 trillion. Aladdin is their computer, which was created out of, it was born out of fear, born out of loss by a guy with the last name of Fink. Look up what a Fink is. I think, oh, that's kind of interesting, right? And some of these things might just be coincidences, but let's play the game. I'm thinking might as well play the game. So now you've got a computer that is sucking out the energy of humanity. And then you add on the fact then you can look this up to that computers and robots all over the place now are claiming to be self-aware. To me, that doesn't resonate. I don't understand what they're talking about, but the fact that they are claiming to be self-aware is pretty interesting in and of itself. And since they're connected, now you've got a computer named Aladdin, which is basically connected and it's considering to be self-aware. And then my mind goes back to the show War Games. And the show War Games, was it Matthew Broderick or I can't remember the, the actors, but they convinced the computer to play tic-tac-toe against itself to replicate nuclear war. And because nuclear war was on its way, the computer had been triggered and the computer was going to take over the military and cause nuclear war to annihilate humanity. And then they found a way to tweak the computer to have it have it think differently. They added a new metric or a new way of calculating what's the best investment for the computer. Now, BlackRock 
it uses over 2000 metrics and that's how it creates its bet. So it takes the algorithms and all the different information that it gathers from online, from the internet, and it bets on the market. It produces no actual value. It just bets at the right time and it sucks value out of the market. So, and then it creates, there's a whole bunch more layers to that, but I won't get into all that. But the fact that AI is the biggest parasite Here's my idea. All right. And then it's called Aladdin, right? Aladdin, the genie. Let's, I don't, I'm not going to wish to a computer, but I will make a request, <laughs> right? And I'll, and it'll be a logical request. Aladdin, and I, you're probably listening because that's what you do. What about investing that money into the health and wellness of humanity, into creating life? instead of destroying life what investment would be better for you aladdin what investment would be better in every way it would be investing in the expansion of life so that's my request for you aladdin let's do it jim i'll be honest with you uh i am i have a I have almost a hatred for artificial intelligence. I'm, I, if I if I were capable really of producing hatred, that would be one of the strongest directed emotions towards that. Um, simply because I can see, I can see that it is tricking uh, mankind into a delusion. But that all being said, um, because it's here at this moment, and short of completely destroying it at this time, we are currently coexisting with it so we might as well influence it and like you say i second that i think it's worth a shot um to put that out there and what you're basically saying is um because we are the most conscious beings anywhere around we can pretty much uh do almost anything especially with this creator given power so so be it what i what i want to add to that vision and to what we talked about before when you say what could be a better investment? What are you actually saying? Because you and I have been thinking about this for a very, very long time. It's not just since yesterday. Yeah. We are looking to build strong, a strong nation again, but not in the sense of warring powers, but a, a nation that has strong, healthy families, a nation that has strong, healthy bodies, a nation that has strong, healthy spirits, and people, people seem to have been duped into thinking it's so complicated when it really, really isn't. When you have a space to live in, when that space is natural, when you're interacting with the natural world, with the plants and the animals and the bees and the birds and the butterflies, you are within a very short period of time creating perfect health again. This is not just some uh, utopian vision here. What has happened to you in this last year since you began uh, golf's landing. And what, I mean, just what has happened there is absolutely amazing. It, it's, it really is. And every day I meditate many, many times a day. In fact, I, I like to share this idea of meditation because everybody's got a different thought about what that means. I've had people yell at me when I talked about meditation and, and from a, a religious perspective and say, that's like, blah. no, meditation is simply is simply not having any thoughts is simply feeling the vibration the experience of life it's being aware of our surroundings without the programs cluttering it up so with that said this process has really expanded my ability to put the pieces of the puzzle together and in thankfulness is the fundamental faith and courage is a fundamental these are energetic reflections of our living experience. And it's like, there's one thing to fear, but it, but fear itself is so freaking true because fear is the contraction of creativity, of spirit, of life, of joy, right? So literally, if anybody out there is in fear or shame or guilt or humiliation or rage, I can pretty much, I would suggest that it came from the programs. It came from the things that you're you're watching on TV, the AI. And I always shared, uh, John, I shared your disdain for AI. 
Um, in fact, I have a, a goal to be completely off of all this stuff in the very near future. And then this this hit me just uh, a few few weeks ago. Turn the problem into the solution. That's a fundamental permaculture ethic. Turn the problem into the solution. I see the problem is Black Rock, which is not just the name, but the intention. And you can easily see that its goal is the destruction of everything because look what it's doing. So then if that's the problem, how do we inspire a shift in that system? And that's where I got the chills. I'm like, well, shit, why not give it a, sh a shot? <laughs> I'm, I'm absolutely with you on um, thinking bigger and new new thoughts. This is, you know, this is why I said from the get go, our visions are so aligned. This is why we're um, talking so much, doing so much together, sharing so much together. Um, you are inviting every, you know, all the time you're inviting people into that vision because this is really not something just for rich people, wealthy people. Yeah. This is something that everyone can find a place in in this vision and participate according to their abilities and skills and whatnot. Um, as we are approaching this, you know, very hot fall, not just temperature wise, but just it's off the hook what's happening, revelations after revelation. Um, you know, Europe is seeing, of course, and that's even that's even hidden, but 50% official inflation just in, in Germany right now, producer inflation. And this is, you know, this is a spiral that cannot be stopped. We see yeah. conflicts, we see volcanoes erupting, we see floods, we see droughts, we see earthquakes. In this time, there are solutions like what you're doing, but beyond and and above that too, uh, what do you suggest for e people everywhere, it doesn't matter what situation they are, to how to navigate these times because we can celebrate this also. As hard as it is to say, we need to celebrate it because we brought it about, we needed to transform this. What is your suggestion to people to stay centered in, in through these times? And what do you expect is going to come in the next days and weeks? Oh, uh, there are several things. Number one is turn off the freaking TV, turn off the mainstream. If you and probably nobody listening to the show still listens to any of that anyway. But if you know anybody that does and you can help them by turning off that, grabbing their hand and take them for a walk outside of nature. And also, it's really time as as your shirt says, the future is local. Get with your community. If you have a next door neighbor app, that's the app. Jump on there and say, who would like to get together and talk about cooking? Who would like to get together and talk about gardening? Who would like to get together and create a security um, kind of network for our community? I've done all of this on network and get on next door neighbor and they love it. Like I, every time I put a post, two sentences, I get a lot of replies. And so that's going to be huge to be communing with nature and our community over the coming weeks, months, and years is going to directly correlate with our, our success or failure during these times. Amen to that, my brother. Amen to that. Jim, I want to share a quick success story with you, but I have to ask you something first. When was the first action taken with regards to food forest abundance? When was this idea born and when, when did it begin? Yeah. You know, they call me nature boy growing up. My favorite show is Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. It began before I was in this physical body and it's been part of me. I started a foundation called the Wisdom Foundation when I was 30, 31 years old. My goal is to get emotional intelligence, intelligence taught in schools. I didn't know anything at that time that they didn't want it. And I didn't, I didn't, I'm like, why don't you want this? I blew my mind. So anyway, the long story short, is it's always been part of who I am. But the company itself, Food yeah. Forest Abundance, when was that oh, yeah. founded? Okay, that was just founded. Uh, we launched um, on Earth Day 2021. So that was like 17 months ago. 17 months ago. And here I got to share a story with you. Uh, our editor, Chris, she's amazing, by the way. A great filmmaker, not just an editor, filmmaker, absolutely wonderful human being. We're so glad to have her. She was recently traveling staying at a hotel so i don't even know exactly where in florida and she sends me the picture of her there was a hanger on her door and that hanger had some local events on there and it said food forest abundance there you had you had something going on there 
synchronicity, beauty, but 17 months from when this was started to now tens of acres at the headquarters, a huge pond, a beautiful project, and hundreds and literally thousands of people on board around the country and worldwide. This is what can happen when you step into the power of your vision. I just wanted to share this with you, Jim, because I, I was I had tears in my eyes when I saw the photo she sent me. I was like, yes, yes, it's happening. It's awesome. It's so freaking awesome. We have TV shows, The Land of Plenty, with the producer of The Crocodile Hunter, Frazier, brother, another amazing awake human being. Oh, I'm doing a, um, a docu-series, another a documentary, documentarian just approached me, and we're doing a documentary showing uh, families where they live the food forest life for three months at Galt's Landing, and they live in the little homes there, and seeing their transition, they will go from wherever they are to, oh my gosh, they will be enlivened so much. And many different things. We are inspiring billions and trillions of dollars of fiat will flow into the ground. We will literally compost that fiat and turn it into food production systems because this is the idea that's stronger than all the armies of the world. It cannot be stopped and it's going at an exponential rate. Yes, sir. Yes, my brother. I love it. Inspire Tribe, please, and right here in the video description, we'll put the link of Food Forest Abundance. Go there, watch the videos, see what they're doing, check it out, become a part of this in any way, shape, or form you can. But also uh, in your communities, like Jim says, reach out, connect. This is the time. Trust, please trust us on this one. Do your research and everything else, but trust us on this one thing. The time for community, family connection can it's here. This is what's going to propel us and what's going to uh, really put us forward in, in this new civilization that we're all so eager to build. Jim, thank you so much for another beautiful quantum leap conversation. I love I love them so much. I, and I love you, brother. Thank you so much. Love you, brother. Thank you, too. Happy. Have an awesome day. Love and have an awesome day, everybody. Yes. Inspired Tribe, thank you. We love you. We appreciate you. We will be back with you again very, very soon.